when I set out designing this assembly table, there were a lot of things I wanted it to include. I wanted it to have built-in tool tray storage directly underneath so I wouldn't be forced to drop tools on top of the workbench. I could just throw them underneath, get to them quickly, easily. I've been debating buying a router lift. I'm not convinced I'm gonna use a router table that often. I use my cordless Milwaukee router almost every day. I've got a bigger DeWalt one that I want in a dedicated router table, but I'm just not willing to spend the money on the router lift. So those through shelves that you see there, if I wanna put one in, I can drop it right down through the top of the table, no problem. It's got those caster wheels on the side that are out of the way. It's got eight drawers for all the stuff I use on a daily basis, plenty of other tool storage on the back end. Those through shelves are also great for wooden calls for doing big glue ups or other clamps. The French cleats on the side are great. I started off by cutting the top and bottom supports as well as the tool tray face frame. Easiest way to cut those rectangles out is to drill some holes, use a jigsaw, rough it out, then build a jig and use a flush trim bit with a router to clean it up. The four legs are just made out of two by fours. When you're attaching the top and bottom braces to the legs, you wanna be sure everything is nice, straight, square. What I did is I threw a bunch of glue on it, hit it with a brad nail or two, just to hold it in place. It was enough if I needed to do any micro adjustments. Once it was square, I threw five screws in at all the joints. It's a good idea throughout this build to just take some scrap plywood pieces and throw some reinforcements in all the corners. This will be one of two inside walls. You gotta cut out a toe kick as well as a, a notch in the center to allow for a center support to run through it. You want to glue and screw the center walls in place. After you secure it with the pocket holes, you can add additional reinforcing screws from the outside. Here you can see I'm throwing the toe kick board in there as well. At this point, this is what it's going to look like. Here I'm gluing together the uh, double layered center support brace. I flipped the table on its front side to pound in the center support brace. It was a pretty snug fit. I'm also taking this opportunity to add reinforcement pieces on all the joints that I can. Here you can see all those small reinforcement pieces that I added. And this is what it looks like at this point. Here I'm working on the tool tray bottoms and back. Two of these are gonna be 20 inches wide and then one of them is gonna be 22 inches wide. Here I'm just using some more scrap pieces to add additional reinforcement to the bottom. This also gives more material for the bottom shelves to screw into. I'm stupid, so when I added these supports, I didn't think about how they would interfere with the bottom shelf. So 
now I have to notch out two spots on the bottom shelf so that it can fit inside. Now I'm just making a series of repeat cuts for all the pieces that I'll need for the drawers. I swear to God, when I bought this piece of plywood, I rummaged through the stack to find the straightest one. But sure enough, it sits in my garage for a week, and that's what it looks like. These are all gonna be the bottom parts of the eight drawers. Just mark and center, then using this Craig jig to pre-drill the holes for the drawer pull hardware. This is probably the easiest fastest and most efficient way to make drawers. You don't need to do anything sexy or fancy here. Just use glue, butt joints, throw some brad nails in there. Before the glue sets up, you throw your base on it. As long as your base is square, use that as a guide and make sure all the edges are flush around it and then just brad nail those in. And I promise you, your drawer will not come apart. I use these two scrap pieces of wood, screwed them right into the side to act as a shelf so I can get my first set of drawers in. Once I did that, I used a scrap quarter inch piece of wood to act as a spacer for all the other drawers stacked on top. You can see here there's a bit of a gap above that top drawer, which is fine. I can fit some of my bigger tools in there, and that gap will be covered by the face plate. I use two small screws on the left and right to act as spacers when I'm positioning this face plate. Once it's where I need it, I'll throw some screws in the front, open it up, throw some screws in the back, take those front screws out, and then re-drill those holes for all the way through for the drawer holes. If you don't want to use screws in the front, you can just throw a couple of brad nails in there to hold it in place until you get those back screws in. You can just make a simple jig like this to drill the required holes for all the shelf pins so you can have adjustable shelving on the inside. And you just throw some doors on there and you can see the simple shelves I built on the inside. I attach four French cleats on either side. Just using some more scrap wood to add additional reinforcements across the top.
So my original plan was to use two layers of MDF for the top. I went to Lowe's, they were sold out of MDF, which I've never seen before. So I bought this Melamine, which turned out to be a lot cheaper. When I got it there and I started messing around with it, it was so heavy and sturdy. I ultimately decided just to use one layer. I think that's all it will ever need and it cuts down on the weight as well. The only concern I had with the melamine is that it would affect proper adhesion with the contact cement. So before I threw the contact cement on, I made sure to go across the whole thing with 60 grit sandpaper and give it a couple passes. I know they sell these fancy Gucci Formica carbide cutters. You do not need those, just use a razor blade, score it a couple times, and it snaps very easily. Save yourself some money. This was my first time working with Formica laminate and contact cement. You don't need to overthink it. It was actually pretty easy. Just dump a shitload of contact cement down, start spreading it out. I was using a roller, didn't work out too well, so I got a putty knife, that worked great. You wanna apply the contact cement to both surfaces, let it dry a couple minutes until it gets tacky. Once those two sides touch, they're gonna stick immediately. So lay some spacers down and take them out as you press it down. I just used a inch wooden dowel to press because I wasn't about to spend the money on a roller that I would probably only use once. I'm using a down cut flush trim bit to take off all the excess. You can see here it left a pretty clean cut. And I came in with a 45 degree chamfer bit just to take that sharp edge off. I attached the top using four brackets, one on each leg. These retractable casters are pretty sweet. You can see I'm pushing them down at the same time just to prevent any twisting and racking. You can see that this is quite the upgrade from my last assembly table. Overall, I'm very happy with how this assembly table turned out. I'm glad I took the time to come up with the detailed plans. Because of those plans, I didn't run into any major roadblocks during the build process. If you guys want to try to do this yourselves, the plans are available on my website. I'll make sure that, as well as all the materials I used, are linked below.